This episode is sponsored by Squarespace. Whether you need a domain, website, or online store, make your next move with Squarespace. I've just got back from our Italy retreat where 13 of us spent a week together in the beautiful Tuscan hills, just journaling, reflecting, working out where we are on our journey, eating great food, visiting great local towns, and just loads of time talking to each other. I really love doing these retreats because it feels like one of the few times in our modern era where a group of people can come together and even though we're strangers, we can share our stories with each other and attempt to encourage each other to do intentional community. One of the things I got the people who attended this year to do was to share their journey with each other and present some of their images and how they've gone from the images they used to make to the images they're making now and the work they'd really like to be making off into the future. And it really got me thinking about growth. And while I've had these thoughts swimming around in my head, a phrase came back from my past that I read once and really made a difference to me. So I thought I would share that with you today in the hope that it encourages you and get you to think differently about how you grow as an artist, as a photographer, or just a person in general. At first, it might seem a little abstract and heady, but hang in there with me because I'm gonna make this super practical. This little phrase has really helped me in really tangible ways in my growth as both an artist and a person. Ken Wilber is a modern day thinker who theorizes around the intersection between psychology and spirituality and talks a lot in his work about our growth, both as individuals and as societies in general. I'll admit that a lot of his writing goes over my head, but there has been this one phrase which has come back to me again and again, and it's this, that in our growth as human beings, we need to learn to transcend and include. The basic idea is this, is whether as individuals or as artists or as photographers really specifically, we're always looking to grow, hopefully. We are trying to move beyond the stage that we're at to a new stage. So the things that we were learning last year, the skills that we taught ourselves, that we were really struggling to get a handle on, now form the foundation this year that we're building new skills on top of and finding a new direction forward. So there's this idea that wherever we are now, we're looking to transcend that stage. But as we grow and we move through these stages of development, we have choices to make about how we think and feel about the stages that we've moved through. Do we reject them, push them past, and just accept where we're at now? Or do we try and include those stages in our growth and own it as a part of our journey? And that's why I find those two words so helpful, because they teach me, one, to always be looking for the next stage to move on to, to not stay comfortable and quiet where I am, but always be fighting to learn something new and to push myself. And two, that I need to learn to integrate everything that I've been through, to roll it into the whole and to take it along with me, because every stage that I've been through is a key part of my journey and shouldn't be looked down on. I need to learn to transcend and include as I go. All right, that's enough theory, let's make it practical. So how do we apply this to our creative journey? Let's start with that first word, transcend. How do we push ourselves to make sure that we're always growing and never staying stagnant, always moving on to that next stage? I think learning is a posture that we can assume in life. Personally, I always want to be learning something new. I wanna make myself a lifelong learner, whether that's as a photographer, a writer, a filmmaker, just in life in general, working on myself. I always want to be pushing myself to learn something new, and that has to be a choice that I make because it doesn't come automatically. All of us experience that temptation to do the bare minimum, to just get by or to get the attention that we want, to make sure that we're not stretching ourselves too far in order to get the comfort and the validation we're looking for in our work. And let's be honest, growth always means change and change can be really, really uncomfortable and unsettling. And that's why to grow has to be a mindset that we constantly choose. As photographers specifically, it's really tempting when we find a few techniques that get a bit of traction to just settle in, to think that we've arrived because people are giving us attention for something that we're doing and start to coast. 
I know a few photographers who are still using the same techniques that they used 15 years ago. There's no growth in their work because they found something they think worked and it feels like their work has just stalled. I've used this example on this channel before, but let me make this personal for a second. I could choose to stop growing. I could say, well, I found a technique that people seem to like, and I could just be the diagonal shadow on a wall guy because I can easily do it in any city I visit, and people really seem to like it online, so it validates me in some way. But I don't want to get trapped in cliches of my own making. I always want to be expanding, building a bigger box of tools, and making sure that my worldview is always becoming more nuanced so that my work has more depth and interest and variety in it. Anthony Bourdain once wrote, maybe that's enlightenment enough, to know that there is no final resting place of the mind, no moment of smug clarity. Perhaps wisdom is realizing how small I am and unwise and how far I have yet to go. There's a great humility to that sentiment and it reminds me that I should never fall into the trap of thinking I'm done. I never want to reach the end point of my growth as if there is one. There's always more to learn and I want to stay in that uncomfortable posture of realizing constantly how little I know, how much more there is to know and how much further I still have to go. So that's the transcending part and the constantly moving beyond part of that phrase. But what does the include word mean in that? Well, I think he's teaching us to assimilate rather than reject the things that we've been through, to take all the stages of everything we've been through and learn to roll it into the whole and own it as an important part of our journey. The biggest thing I take away from that word include is it reminds me not to look down on the things that I've been through or the dead end roads that I've had to take. I've had to learn so many lessons to build the photography skills I had today and some of those were really tough lessons but even when I made mistakes or tried things that didn't go anywhere every single one of those things taught me something that got me to where I am today and that's just the nature of the journey. My earliest Instagram images, for example, even those taken right back at the beginning when I joined in about 2011, they're all still sitting there on my account. And so many of them are terrible, but I don't feel any need to bring them down or hide them away or take them offline because I know what happens. Photographers will go and take a look, especially beginner photographers, and realize, oh, he used to not be very good, but look, he's grown over time. I own all those parts of my journey because how could it be any other way than we start bad and we get better and better as time goes by. I don't feel the need to hide my journey at all. I'm not for a minute saying go post your terrible images from the beginning on your website or something, but in general, I don't think we should be trying to hide our growth or resent the things that we've had to go through or the images that we've made to get to where we are today. I, for example, know how encouraging it is and I hear from beginner photographers who take a look at my growth on Instagram and it helps them say of their own images, well, they're not very good today, but look what happens if you stick with something. I can see how he went from bad to better to better as time went on, so that can be the road for me too. I'll give you some examples. So as a photographer, I've used many different techniques along the road as I was trying to work out what sort of images I wanted to make. For a while, I heavily relied on presets because I didn't really know how to edit the color in my work. There was a time where I was adding lots of grunge and texture to my images because I thought it made them more interesting and elevated them. And I even used apps at a stage like lens distortions, which would add fake light leaks and haze to the images because I thought people will think this is really cool. Most of those aren't tools that I would use to make images with anymore. Not that there's anything wrong with them inherently, I've just decided against them over time. And I now have a choice to make about how I think about the use of those tools in my past. I could, if I wanted to play that ego game of pretending that I'm somehow separate and superior to other photographers, I could pull down all that work, hide it away and criticize other people going, you shouldn't use presets or heavy grunge or fake light leaks in your images. But I think that would be a very dishonest and ungenerous attitude. Or I can own those stages as parts of my journey and leave those images up, even though it might draw criticism from other photographers. I know that the honest truth is they were important steps for me to get to the images that I'm making today. And personally, I think the world would be a much better place if we all learned to integrate and include the different stages in our journey, even publicly, without fear or shame. In fact, I think about those stages of growth like tattoos. I don't think we should be getting tattoos if we're not willing to own them down the road, if we can't accept that it might not be our choice to get that tattoo today, but it still represents a legitimate chapter in the journey of our lives. It represents to me hopefully being able to have the grace to accept all the choices that I've made and being grateful for every chapter that I've been through, for turning me into the person or the artist or the photographer that I am today. 
every single decision I made and every dead end I went down and especially maybe every mistake that I made, all of it should be integrated into the whole. So that's what this phrase transcend and include reminds me about growth, that life is a journey, our art form is a journey. Hopefully if you're here on this channel, photography for you is a journey, you're never done. We're constantly moving and learning and growing and transcending the phase that we're in now to move on to new and better things. It reminds me to always be looking for what's next and never settle for what is. To not be seduced by this idea that I should stay where I am if it's getting a little bit of attention because it could mean that my whole journey stalls. I constantly need to be looking for ways to grow beyond where I'm at. And it also reminds me to never look down on where I've come from, that every part of it was necessary, every step was important, maybe every misstep was even more important in getting me to where I am today and learning the lessons that I've learned. So whenever I'm feeling down about my progress that it's not going fast enough, I remember those two words and I remind myself to own it all and be grateful instead for how far I've come. And it brings me a lot of comfort and puts things in perspective for me. And I hope by sharing it with you today, it's done the same for you. Thanks again to Squarespace for sponsoring this episode. If you need a new website or a domain, they're a fantastic option. I've used them myself as my website of choice for over a decade now. One of the great things I like about Squarespace is the fact that it helps me to set up a store. So many of us as photographers want to sell our work online, but if you're like me, you're quite intimidated by the idea of taking people's money and sending out orders, it feels quite complicated and a lot of responsibility. Setting up my Squarespace store was really easy to do. I could just upload photographs of the products, write descriptions, add prices, and it all looked really clean and minimal on my website. And then when the orders came through from customers, I could see where they were coming from, where the item needed to be shipped to, and I could even set up emails that go out to the customers letting them know that their products are on the way. And then I could see sales reports to let me know how sales were actually doing. It couldn't have been simpler. Start your free trial today at squarespace.com and go to squarespace.com forward slash Sean Tucker to get 10% off your first purchase.